Hi, I'm Natalie Manuel Lee, and I partner with my good friend, Dorian Renaud, who is the CEO and founder of Butterskin. We wanted to highlight the stories that continue to shape how we see ourselves, to shine a light on our inner beauty. Here is Beyond the Surface. Hi. Hey. How are you? It's so good to see you. So good to see you. <laughs> you look fantastic. I, I actually do feel like I'm seeing you differently with you in that chair, and I've been watching this happen. Do so you now really? I see you differently. Yeah, I respect you. Like <laughs> Oprah or somebody. Like, I respect you like that. And I respect you back. Yeah. You are an actor, a model, a businessman, a singer and the founder of Butter. Yes. Take me to the genesis of Butter. Ah, man. I mean, I think Butter really started in my spirit, you know, uh, when I saw my dad in his barbershop making everybody feel good, I would say. And then I think, uh, you know, you've been knowing me for a long time. Uh, I've always been about like community and like connecting dots, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I have been on a show in the cut on Bounce TV for a few years, in and off of reality TV. And I felt like I was playing um, co-star to everybody in my life mm. and everything in my life. I wasn't stepping into the person that I was always told by you guys that I was. And so about three and a half years ago, you know, by chance and or by God, I met my business partner and he said to me, I had no idea that he was uh, a skincare manufacturer. No idea. Where'd you guys meet? We met because I was modeling for mm. a skincare line that did not want to pay me. Okay, so let me tell you a story I've never told anybody. This is really how Butter got started, for real. That's the question. So I was, uh, you know, always getting my skin done, as you know. So I met always my- Always have a, a facial appointment. Always having a facial. Yes. Like, even when I couldn't afford it. Yes. So I met this girl at the club, who's now my esthetician, Celeste, and she mm -hmm. said, if you come in, uh, to my spot, I'll give you a free facial if you post it on Instagram. Because at the time, Instagram was just starting and yeah. I was out and about and uh, doing reality TV and all that stuff. And I said, all right, cool. So she was so good, I started referring my celebrity friends to her. And so uh, the doctor came and said, hey, will you throw a party here at the spa? And I was like, yeah, you know, give me $10,000. And then he did. And so I threw a few more and I realized, oh my God, I have this influence in skincare, but I really loved it. So I didn't look at it as a job because you know I would go yes. get facials all the time. So I was like, yo, I got the hookup on the facials, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, I get to make some money doing it. And then the skincare community took notice. A new Beauty Magazine reached out to me to host a party and I did one for them. And then a line from London reached out and said, will you model for us? And we'll pay you $6,000 a month. And at the time I was in between gigs and I was like, yes, like my rent is paid, that's some extra money. And uh, I threw a party for them and, you know, did what I did because I mean, I think I was like a professional socialite for like four or five years. Yes, we you was were. out. Yes. But uh, <laughs> I threw a party for them and, you know, was getting their stuff um, in celebrities' hands and celebrities were posting that brand. And so I called them up and I said, hey, wow. um, can we do a collab? Because Puff Daddy is posting your brand and, you know, I'm giving this stuff to these celebrities, but I think that maybe it should be a little bit more personal. He goes, no, because you're not making us any money. And I said, all right, well, then what does that mean? He was like, well, we can't pay you anymore, okay? I threw a party for them, blew their brand up, and so uh, a few weeks later, their manufacturer uh, got in touch with me, or they put me in touch with their manufacturer, and I said, look, all right, I'll talk to them, you know, but to me, these guys weren't the best in business. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got in touch with me and they, he had my business partner now, he came here on a media assignment, mm -hmm. he says. Um, and we sat down and we talked and, 
you know, this was a time where I was just being social. So we went to the Polo Lounge and I know everybody, hey girl, of course. all the celebrities, <laughs> whatever. You know, like I think, you know, Tamar and Tony Braxton, whatever. These are people that I just know, we've just been out here for so long sure. that I think that we become jaded by even icons around us, right? So we go to catch, they're taking my pictures. It was, this happened on the right night because they usually didn't give a damn mm -hmm. about me unless I was with my friends, <laughs> okay? But they were taking my pictures and he said, well, what do you do? And I said, you know, I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that acting just to pay the bills. I do everything. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, what do you really want to do? And I said, I want to do a skincare line for black people, African-American people. And he said, well, if you can get uh, over in a, a business proposal to me, then I, and then I look at it. I said, well, I have one. And so, yeah, three drinks in, I show it to him. I had already wrote one up. I remember one night leaving set and uh, just, you know, wrote one out and said, I'm gonna, with my next check, I'm gonna do this. So the next day he picked me up. You know, I didn't know this man and he was a white man. So, you know, at the time <laughs> I'm like, okay, you know what? I am going on a real limb. I think I had just reached that point of this might be my last shot. And mm. he took me wait, wait, to. This might be your last shot. Yeah. Last shot for being a founder, creative of, of a brand, or more so just last shot in general. Well, of I life. didn't know I would be a founder, or creative of a brand. Mm -hmm. I just thought, you know, acting had been okay, mm -hmm. hosting had been okay. Mm -hmm. I hadn't got a chance to do music yet. Everything had just been all right. Mm -hmm. And I said, God, I think this is my last shot to try something new mm -hmm. and actually shoot and dunk the bucket because otherwise, how am I gonna get to the Met Gala? <laughs> I literally was thinking that on set one day, I'm serious. I was on, on a set on, on a very proud black network, but I said, God damn it, they're never gonna take me serious. You know, I come from reality TV and I, uh, I go do this show and it's characters a lot and how am I gonna be taken serious even by my peers? And um, he picked me up the next day after we had a nice night out and he got to see me in my personality mm -hmm. stage. And uh, we went to a lab. And after we left that lab, he said to me, if you really want to do it, and I remember riding back home with him, I don't know this man at the time, saying, God, how can I afford to do this? It seems like it's like 20,000, maybe I can go book some Instagram gigs or whatever. And he said, if you really want to do this, I have a factory 10 times that size in Florida. And I was like, ooh, he's about to kidnap me. It's not <laughs> about to go good. I feel like you're, this is too good to be true, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Especially at that time, I was like, no way. Mm -hmm. And um, we talked and, you know, I was in Florida maybe two months later and Butter was launched maybe two months after that. So. I started that journey with Butter then, and here we are three years, three and a half years later, and now one of the top black skincare yes, companies in the world. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, I can't even believe it either. Mm -hmm. We still say that yeah. to each other. Yeah. yeah, obviously your product is pretty much everywhere. Yeah. I mean, everybody that I talk to, <laughs> um, they're like, oh, I use Butter. I'm like, wow, like kudos to you. You are Thank stewarding you. it so well. With that, you are in a very competitive market. Yeah. How do you not look to the left or look to the right and compare yourself to other brands and maybe their marketing strategies mm -hmm. or what they're doing and what they're not doing? Does that ever affect the way that you continue to produce butter? Never. I don't think about anybody else in this space only, to, only to support. To be honest with you, no. Like, I'm not here to play skincare wars with anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm number one right now. I do know that. But if I'm not number one, that's not going to determine how I feel about what I did. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what, what I'm doing. Like, the, this, is, this is bigger than me. And um, I don't play petty games. I'm, I'm welcoming to anybody that wants to join me up here in this incredible world of beauty because, like, it's not many of us. I can use some people, you yeah. know, in the space, sure. more people in the space. So mm -hmm. I'm always open to uh, helping other black brands. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't believe in um, putting them down. Has there ever been a moment where you wanted to quit? This morning, <laughs> yesterday, uh, just as much fight is in me, it's, it's a lot of quit in me sometimes too. Mm. I think that's in all of us. I mean, shit, we're tired, you know, before 
Today I was in Miami at my factory and shooting. And you know, you say, you know, I asked for all of this, so don't complain. But yeah, you know, when I lose control, I want to quit. When I feel like uh, I haven't been represented fairly, sometimes I want to quit. You know, uh, but shit, quitting's not an option. I was for just me. about to say, what makes you not <laughs> quit? Well, yes, I, it's not an option, but what what pushes you to say, you know what? It's time to keep going further. It's time yeah. to keep pushing the pin a little bit further. Let it, you know, like how how mm. do you do it? Well, it's a few things. First is my purpose and my legacy, and the legacy yeah. that has been passed down to me, and my name. My dad always say, your name is all you got. So my name, I built it. Um, secondly, um, I have a responsibility to my staff. Come mm. on now. Yes, that's I got real. salaries to pay. That's a I got, I got people that send their kids to private school. I got uh, people in, in retail stores that rely on me. Thirdly, the customers, they won't let me. Mm -hmm. They literally say, please don't ever stop this line. Mm -mm. You know, and so, I mean, how can I quit when people are begging me to continue this? Um, and then... You know, the, the the last one is my faith. I mean, come mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. You don't quit when you got God uh, right with you. Mm -hmm. Me and him taking this journey together. And so when I get low, uh, my friends hold me up a lot. Mm -hmm. My friends, my friends, my friends. Mm -hmm. You know, we talk about family so much, but my friends, since I moved to L.A., all work with me, mm -hmm. including you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it, this will be no fun if we wasn't all here. Together. Like, Doing I did together. this before with nobody around that I knew, and it's not fun, it's not enjoyable. And, you know, the experiences that I go through, we get to be a part of each other's pivotal moments. So, yeah, that's that's been what has kept me from quitting, is, mm -hmm. is half the time you guys telling me not to quit. <laughs> <laughs> and knowing yeah. that it, it's bigger than you. Mm -hmm. It's bigger than you. What you have created is serving a solution for a lot of people that look like us. Mm -hmm. We haven't, not only is it affordable, but we haven't had, I mean, there has been, you know, options for us to grab off of the shelves for our skin, mm -hmm. but for one, to be able to afford it, not only to be able to, to afford it, but being able to see results instantly and right away. So yes, I think that what you're doing is way bigger than yourself. It's, yeah. Yes, it's your legacy. Yes, it's all those things, but there's so much purpose in it. I mean, it's when people say, I don't even want to go to, uh, to sleep without makeup on with my boyfriend, and now I can wake up, you know, comfortably with no makeup on, or, you know, I had bad skin growing up or problematic skin, so I know what it's like to have acne and feel insecure. I mean, come on, we, nobody can be perfect. So I always say you cannot have perfect skin, but you can have a good skincare routine and have mm -hmm. good skin, right? But your appearance is everything. and. I remember when I got into a very public fight some years ago. I remember I've that. I've never, ever talked about this on camera. I remember that. And you were there for me. Mm -hmm. Everybody that were, was there for me at that time um, is still in my life. Mm. Um, but I remember going across the street to the yoga place, and this little girl saw me, and she called me ugly because my face was so badly bruised. And... I didn't have the looks to uh, rely on anymore. I had to go here. And as my face began to heal, I started using products and trying to get myself back right by using these products. My face was so badly damaged. And not to mention, it was all over the internet. Mm -hmm. So I never thought that people would see me the same. Mm -hmm. And so it was me trying to maintain perfect Okay, after falling from grace, I would say, but that was the best thing that could have ever happened, was like the public embarrassment of getting your ass kicked. Yeah. <laughs> and not in such a... Why do you think it was the best thing? Because a lot of times yeah. we don't, you know, we, we ostracize the failures because we yeah. don't want, they, we, we feel so shameful yeah. that we have failed. Yeah. But in our reality, we need those failures. Oh, we yeah. need those embarrassments. Oh, yeah. We need those moments. Yeah. So for you, what did that moment produce yeah. in you? Well, whew, a lot. I mean, 
I was running rampant mm -hmm. at that time. Yes. Because I had nothing to do. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, my gift wasn't being nourished mm -hmm. and nurtured. So I was trying to do what I thought I should do out here to maintain and keep up. And I found myself in a, a real bad situation. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the internet found me in a real mm -hmm. bad situation too. And so I was for the first time like super publicly embarrassed, mm -hmm. okay? And then I had to go home to Beaumont, where I'm from, and like heal in my parents' house, work out in their gym. And then I decided when my face healed, it was time for me to go back. And I shot a magazine cover and, you know, I did that. But um, if that wouldn't have happened, I don't know where I would be because that took me out. Mm. That took me out. To, you were the, at the end of yourself. That was, yeah, that was at the end of, um, you know, I needed that. It was like an outer body experience when I was laying on that curb in Hollywood and I saw myself and I said, uh-oh, this was not it. Mm -hmm. But uh, God had another plan. So I started rehabilitating myself, my spirit, my energy and getting back to who I really was. And when I came back to LA, um, I changed everything and I started moving different and I started working and I started taking time with myself. And, and I don't think if I, if I wouldn't have failed so hard in front of everybody, I don't think I would have had the courage to even start butter. Because mm. it takes a lot of courage, especially as a man, a black man, to go into the beauty world. You have no idea what you're doing. If I wouldn't have been that shamed <laughs> in front of that many people, then I would have been scared to do everything. And now I'm like, I ain't scared of nothing mm -hmm. because I've been there before. I mean, you pretty much said on the internet, so they've said everything bad about me that they could say. So I said, well, hell, if you say anything else, it's gotta be good. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, if it's bad, at least I know how to deal with it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's indicative of God turns everything in yeah. for good. Yeah. You know, the bad, he uses it all. Yeah. And thank God for it. Thank God for it. We have all faced insurmountable valleys, yeah. mountains, yeah. Um, adversities in the last few years. What do you believe you've gained mm. during this pandemic? Ah, maybe more patience. Mm -hmm. Don't you notice that? Yes, you're very Don't patient. Don't you notice that yes. I have more patience? I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, wow, I, I see the fruit yes. of, of the patience coming mm -hmm. out of Dorian. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to, mm -hmm. it's like, you, it's so many things that I cannot control mm -hmm. from things that's going on in the factory, the things that's mm -hmm. going on in the press, the things that's going on at photo shoots that sometimes I just have to sit back and I think I've learned patience. I think I've learned, um, you know, how to listen a little bit more. Um, and I think I've learned humility more ever in my life because when you don't plan on something happening so large, mm -hmm. you know, and not in the way that you thought, you know, you, I mean, you just stay humble in it and stay happy for the moment. And yeah. I'm living in, in grace and gratitude in the moment. I'm trying more now. So many times I would do these interviews and wouldn't even remember what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But I'm living in the moment in the present because that's all that really matters. How do you stay humble? It's hard when you got an eight foot poster at Macy's. <laughs> you know that's what I mean? asked. Like, oh, you are your skincare oh, is number one. How um, do you stay humble? Because skincare is like your most vulnerable place, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like if when you washing your face, wash everything off, you're in a shower, you're vulnerable, you are humble. Because mm -hmm. you're looking at yourself in, 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 in the humility, like, God damn, I got to fix this or whatever. And mm -hmm. I think I stay humble because um, I was fortunate enough for real to see life like this through some of my friends' eyes when I was real young. Mm -hmm. it, it wasn't what I thought sometimes. And so my family, my friends, the people around me keep me humble, but the journey keeps me humble because mm -hmm. it's hard. Yes, very hard. <laughs> hard shit keeps you humble. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, you know, if you, if you get to walk around and you know, everybody just wants to take your pictures and you look beautiful all day. And, you know, it's handed to you, you're not humble because mm -hmm. it was handed to you. So mm -hmm. as long as I'm hustling and working, I'm gonna remain humble because it's a lot of work, right? Yeah, yeah. So 
Yeah, this this is for us. This I'm I'm humble because this shit come from my ancestors. Mm -hmm. They'll beat my ass if I'm not humble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah. In life. Yeah, humility. I'm humble exalts. because I got a fear of God. Mm -hmm. You feel me? That reverence. Kudos. Yeah. Oh, kudos. You feel me? Yes. But I'm humble because of God. How dare me? Yes. This shit can be taken tomorrow. Mm. You know, so I'm living in every moment because if it is taken tomorrow, I'm gonna be able to tell them a hell of a amazing story. Mm -hmm. That shit keeps me humble. That's good. Yeah. That's a word. What, besides your lack of patience mm -hmm. during the pandemic and, and you gained it, what has it exposed about yourself inwardly that you're like, ooh, this is something I need to work on? Ooh, a lot. So let me tell you, they ran like a, a rerun of the first show I was on, College Hill, during the pandemic. They, the nerve of BET. I mean, they <laughs> ran a marathon on me. Oh. And I got to look at myself at like 20 years old and I didn't like that show much when I did it because it was a painful time in my life because I didn't really know who I was. So I had to rewatch it and then regrow from it. And then I started looking inward and doing therapy and learning that, you know, I had some issues that I needed to solve within myself, with my family, with my mother. I mean, come on, everybody in the pandemic, it was like, damn, so I, yes. got, yes. I got therapy with everybody, uh, yep. you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and it was, I live alone. And at the mm -hmm. time, it was like looking at the man in the mirror, like, you know, uh, Butter started becoming really successful. Mm -hmm. in the pandemic. Why do you believe that the catalyst for Buddha, the success of mm -hmm. Buddha, was from the pandemic? A few reasons. Well, I think, for one, people, you know, started really, well, we thought we was gonna be in there for like a month or two. So we was like, all right, let's get our bodies together. Yes, we let's did. Let's get our skin we together. We like, oh, we just have um, two months. Yeah, so I think first people started, you know, buying it for that reason. And then, you know, we took advantage of people being on their phones and really started, you know, pumping out a lot of content. I was just at home shooting my friends mm -hmm. and just, you know, doing the best I could to keep it alive. And um, I think that that was a time where people needed some extra self-care. So every product we put out was like an extra five minutes for them of mm -hmm. self-care. And to be honest with you, I think uh, the real, real reason why Butter blew up in the pandemic is because I didn't have shit else to focus on. Mm. <laughs> and I was trying to act and trying to host and doing too much. And my business partner said, man, if you dive all the way in, this will be huge. And I was scared to dive all the way in prior to. And at that point, that was my only job. So I was like, all right, it's me and you. Like, yeah. let's see what we can do. And I was actually able to really care about it and focus it and nurture it and, and, and treat it like a child because it was all I had. Yeah. I didn't have the TV show. I didn't have the parties that I got invited to. All I had was butter. And so that time allowed me to get creative and put my all into it and really listen and understand, whoa, this thing could go somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's inspiring because I believe that and I believe that this is indicative of use what's in your hand mm -hmm. to get yeah. what's in your heart, yeah. to get to what's in your heart. Yeah. You used whatever you had. And even earlier in the conversation when you were talking about, you know, you're using, you know, the people around you, the influential uh -huh. friends, the celebrity friends, you mm -hmm. know, you're using the people to just do what you, what you need to do. And I think a lot of times we look so outwardly for different things to give us the things that we want, mm -hmm. but it's right there in our hands. That's what don't, I realized. Don't, yeah. don't waste it. It's yeah. right there. Use what's in your hands. Yeah. So I applaud you for not letting that go by the wayside, yeah. you know, and being honoring mm -hmm. what you had mm -hmm. and putting all of your, you know, everything, all of your energy into that. Yeah. So the world knows you as actor, singer, all the things. Yeah. When those labels fall off, who yeah. are you? Ah, uh, I'm just Dorian, a country Negro with a good heart and a good spirit who loves the people around him, his friends, loyal, uh, smart ass. Uh, I, I'm, I'm powerful, I'm opinionated, I am uh, a king in my head. Uh, <laughs> but sometimes I still feel like a loser, mm. you know? 
And that's okay too, mm -hmm. because that is what keeps me going. I mean, come on, we all don't walk out the house feeling great every day, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I think that my greatest role, uh, you know, in this lifetime and purpose is uh, I'm a giver, mm -hmm. you know? Yes, you are. And giving makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. So giving people confidence and, and good skin and good products, that makes me feel good. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that right there is, you know, what keeps me grounded, if mm -hmm. you might say. What legacy do you hope to leave behind? To be Beyonce. <laughs> Um, no, I'm playing <laughs> no, seriously. What legacy would I like to leave behind? You know, I just want people to know I was here. Mm. You know? Mm -hmm. I just want people to uh, be reminded of uh, their best self when they think about me mm -hmm. uh, and, and their most honest and truest self. Mm -hmm. And I want my legacy to give people the freedom to live their lives to the fullest and feel beautiful while doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. It's now, kind of give legacy, baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give <laughs> legacy, baby. What is your self-care practices or your routines? Because everybody wants to know. Everybody yeah. flaunts over your skin. Obviously, it's beautiful. It illuminates. What do you do inwardly and outwardly to keep this image? Yeah. Who? Listen here, because I'm tired. So my makeup artist, EJ, you know, he keeps me right. But, you know, I do what I, I preach. I practice what I preach. I take mm -hmm. care of my skin every day. Mm -hmm. I use my products. And, and when I get the time, I really use them. And I can take them in and I really love them, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's what translates about butter. I really do love my products um, outwardly. I do shit like go to Disneyland by myself. You know, I'm actually. You do do that. I do do you that. Do I'm do weird that. like that. I'm I don't like think that's the weird. most like. I'm like an uh, like an, a very uh, social person, Unicorn. but I'm also yes. an introvert too. Yeah. So I really like my alone time. I really love it, and I mm -hmm. like it in places that might not be normal. So if you mm -hmm. see me at Six Flags alone, just leave me alone. Yeah. <laughs> um, just let me be. You know, I do stuff like that. I, I like to laugh. You know that. Mm -hmm. I like to entertain. I like to 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 feel opulent, feel good. Mm -hmm. um, Inside, I, I, I try my best to connect with God, you know, throughout my day. Um, I pray, I meditate, I read, I listen. Um, music makes me feel good. You know, good music from the 90s, everybody knows that warms my soul. Tony mm -hmm. Braxton, Brandy, Boyz II Men, Destiny Shaw, Beyonce, like that stuff makes me feel good. Tevin Campbell, that makes me feel good because mm -hmm. it reminds me of when I had this dream. Mm. I like to go back to that time mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. That makes me feel good. Yeah. So what is time really? Because mm -hmm. when you can go back there in your head, you're like, ooh. So, yeah. So your self-care is making sure that you fill yourself up. Fill myself up. Fill yourself fill up. Myself your alone up. time. You, yeah. That's how you replenish. I mean, yes. My, my alone time is important because I give so much of me to so many people. Mm -hmm. So I use that time to recharge. I will always cherish it. My parents will tell you they used to hate it. Like, you always want to go upstairs and be by yourself. But I say that to the people that live alone, that went through the pandemic alone, that your alone time is recharging. And it's a difference between being alone and being lonely. I'm not lonely. I like to be alone so I can think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's just important for us to highlight, and we've been talking about this throughout all of um, the conversations, the imperativeness of the human being, not the human doing. Mm -hmm. Because it's hard for us to be still and be in our thoughts, in our minds, you know, just because we can go crazy in our thoughts. But how important it is to be able to focus on the being so that we can sustain the doing. Yeah. And so I believe that you being alone and those different things, I, I just think it's important for people to know that 
that's okay. Yeah. You need to be. Yeah. You need to sit down. Yes. You need to rest. You need to fill up. You need to just be, even if it's for a week or two yeah. or three. I mean, come on, if that's not one thing that we yeah. haven't learned in these last few years, that's what it is. Yeah. You know? What's next? What's next? Well, I just finished my album. Mm. I'm very excited about that. Um, it's, it's the best music I've ever done. And I'm doing it for me. I'm mm. doing it for me. Um, I have a lot of products coming out this year. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of uh, expanding that Bud is going to do. We're going to go into media. We're going to go into music and go into the community. And, you know, mm -hmm. what's next depends on, you know, the community of Butter and what God uh, has in plans for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's next. I think that's the beauty about right now. Mm -hmm. We do not know what's next, but we can live in this moment. And I know right now life is pretty damn good. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Well, I am honored to be sitting here across from you. Thank you for trusting me Thank in this conversation and, and these, this series that we're doing. And I'm proud of you as a friend and just seeing what God has done and in, in and through you. I think that that is really important for people to know about you is that you give. Mm. You're a giver. Mm. You, you want to make sure your friends are taken care of. You want to make sure that the people around you are taken care of. So I applaud you. And so I do believe that this skincare line will go further in heights that we've never seen before yeah. because you're stewarding it well. Yes. So I thank you for that. Thank you. Thanks for being you. so professional, Natalie. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I'm <laughs> professional. Yes. We're, look at us. I cannot. We're all professional we now really and grown are. out of the club. Yes, out of the club. That's out of the club. That's basically where we met. And talking about life yes. and good things. Look at that. This is an honor. Yes. This will continue and yeah. stay tuned, everybody. Stay tuned. Love you, brother. I love you, too.